All right, welcome to the Action Martial Arts Power Hour. This is a show where we talk about anything and everything martial arts related, even not related. You know, a lot of times we don't know what's happening, but it always turns out great. This is Alan Goldberg's brainchild, and let me bring him on so we can talk about it. Alan, tell him what's going on. Welcome, folks. How you doing? Seems I've done this before. <laughs> but uh, we have a very, very special guest tonight. We're going to bring her in a little while so she's on the board with us. But I have to say some things before we start. We're actually going to question and go a little deeper. But basically, she was definitely one of the pioneers of in martial arts, let alone as a woman. Okay. Um, she was the first woman to be on Black Belt Magazine, 1974. That's amazing. I mean, I could, I even remember that cover when I was younger, seeing it and having it in my hand. So, you know, it's an honor to have her on. Um, she has schools all over the world. And she held five years. She held the title for fighting and forms in the martial art world. And that's that's saying a lot. And, you know, when people, oh, there we go. We got, our, we, got, we got our cohorts on there. How you doing, guys? But uh, we we're, you know, honored to have her. She's she's called by many people royalty within the martial art world, which I, I love that because we need royalty. <laughs> okay. So at this point, I'm going to bring her on before. I'm just going to bring her on, but we're not going to say anything yet, but we want her to be part of what, what's going on. So Malaya, the Costco's burnout. Hi. How are you? How are you doing, honey? <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm just going to take. What an honor just, to be here with you. This is amazing. We're great, great to, great we're gonna to have, have a lot you. of fun today. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight on this show. There's no question. We definitely well, boy, like. We to bring need women. fun. Lots oh, of we, laughs. No and question. Fun. <laughs> we definitely. Are you like guys to bring good? Women. Everybody good? Everything's great. Everything's great. Everybody, Everybody happy like to bring and women. healthy. Yeah, everyone's good. Thank God, everyone's here. But we like to bring women on the show because I don't think enough programs are out there. Now, I saw, I watched some of your little shows that you had on also. I like what you're doing. You're bringing women on to see what's going on in the world. And I'll be honest with you, I need to do it. You you ladies are just as much as part of the martial art world as we are. And I am a Wing Chun stylist. The so Wing Chun stylist was created by a woman. That's true. Okay. So there we go. We, we carry on the tradition. But um, we're going to have Joe go over with you. He's our historian. We have Vinny, our, our co-host also. Vinny's been on quite a few shows with us. And uh, just have a lot of fun. Here they go. Um, but I just want to say a few things for the martial art world, what is going on out there. We had our show the other night, and I was talking about uh, the little controversy between Don Wilson and Frank Dukes. Mm. It's escalated. We're still trying to get him on here. So um, I just want to, by the way, by the way, um, Lou, did you find any footage on from the Puma Day? Yeah, I think yeah, I think we have a little something. So uh, let 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 me let everyone be the judge. Just hang on a second. Let's just go play this. That was good. That, I, I, that was, that was, it was, uh, you guys will see this all. You're going to laugh and really enjoy this. Like, well, um, the controversy is still going on. I'm not going to go into any depth with it. There's some just crazy stuff. Okay. So well, I just want to go over some news. We have some birthdays. Okay. One was Mai Sifu, Jason Lau, yes. Frank Sanchez, Kathy Long, uh, Gary Amon, Rob Colasante, and Email Farkas. So we had some birthdays out there within the last couple of days. So happy birthday to everyone. Happy I'm not gonna birthday, sing. everyone. We don't, want, we don't want to scare you away. So we're not doing any second. Actually, Joe's got a great voice. But that, yeah, that's Joe may I sing think. later, but I don't know. Let's yeah. see what happens. Okay. But uh, we had some some great things. And um, actually, tomorrow I've been privy through Warner Brothers. Uh, I have a special screen. I'm, I'm watching the, the new, with Shannon Lee, Mortal Kombat. Oh, nice. Uh, First learned about this seven years ago on a mission in Brazil to capture a wanted fugitive. When we got there, it tore through our unit in seconds. The target had superhuman abilities. It 
had the same marking you do, Cole. It's a birthmark. What do you mean? He was born with it. It's not a birthmark, Cole. It means you've been chosen. Throughout history, different cultures all over the world reference a great tournament of champions. That dragon marking? I think it's an invitation to fight for something known. Mortal Kombat. These are your champions. I'm Sonya. That's Kano. I'm Liu Kang. Thanks, Jax. Kong La. Lord Raiden. The fate of Earth is in our hands. No matter how many of my people you put in the ground. We will not fail. Kill them. I am Sub Zero. fucking beauty and i got an invitation directly from them and on friday having the old cast having the new cast on tomorrow with the movie and the old cast on friday and oh. i was just trying to get a hold wow. of carry they, they, power. They, they, yeah. they're bringing carry on uh trying carry mm -hmm. it's been hard he's in the middle of filming something so okay. it may be a little difficult but he's the guy but, you want on yeah because he's the he is mortal Kombat. yeah yeah know? So, uh, you know, but that's coming up. Um, I, j I just want to say that, you know, in, in what we do is trying to help people all the time, involve the history. We had a great show the other night with Jeff Smith. The history was there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, he told us stories, wonderful stories. But now I just want to give our go guy Joe, Campo Joe, to say a few words and bring in our guest and uh, – Give her a few questions. And Vinny, if you have anything to say, also stick your hand up. Let's get you in there also. All right, buddy? Joe, the floor is yours. Fantastic. You know, I've got to tell you, this is one of the highlights of my martial arts career. Um, I followed your career for many, many years through various magazines. As a young boy growing up, I got to see the, uh, the wonderful demonstration that you and your then husband did at um, the um, – the, um, uh, the uh, Saturday night special, the midnight special with Telly Savalas and the world championships. And, <clears throat> you know, following your career over the years, it's a rare opportunity. I finally get to talk to you and meet you and show a couple of photos from uh, different highlights of your career. And, um, you know, the first question, uh, um, I have that wonderful issue of black belt magazine with the, with the black cover and uh, uh, the red <laughs> and black uh, Kung Fu uniform that you oh. wore. Again, the, the question you always ask people is, how did you begin in the martial arts? How? It was a birthday gift. My mother, my mother thought because uh, uh, I was married and had a small child and my husband worked uh, night shift and I was home, alone all the time. And she thought I needed to learn some form of self-defense. So... It was my mother who actually convinced my husband to get me started in martial arts. And that was my, I didn't know even what martial arts was all about. I, I, I was a snow skier, water skier, windsurfer, all of that. But martial arts, I knew nothing about it. The only thing I think the reason my mother wanted me to learn a form of self-defense is I don't know, you must remember long ago, Friday night boxing. And she was a boxing fan. 
and she used to be glued in front of that television watching boxing and so i only can associate the boxing with her wanting her baby daughter to learn how to take care of herself so that was how i got into it it was a no, wonderful I gift <laughs> it uh, introduced me to the world <laughs> Definitely. Now, definitely. What, was that what Al DeCosco said at that time? And was it was it called One Hop Quendo or was it still called Kaju Campo? No, it was Kaju Campo. He was a uh, Kaju Campo when I started. It was strictly Kaju Campo and Chang Fa. I think he didn't get into One Hop Quendo until 1969. So my beginning was with Al DeCosco. Always was with Al DeCosco except for now and then I trained with Wong Jack Man and I trained with mm -hmm. other people around, but my main teacher always has been Al DeCascos. And um, I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity to work out with him because it didn't matter to him if I was a woman or if I was a man, everyone was equal in that training. It was, it was probably the hardest, hardest, anything I've ever learned. If I thought windsurfing was hard, that was nothing. Snow skiing, nothing. Water skiing, nothing. Fighting in Al's classes and learning how to, to keep the, the, the men that were in there wanted to get rid of me. It was strictly a school made up of Filipinos, uh, Hispanic, uh, black, uh, hardly any, a few whites, not a lot. Um, because at the time I started with Al, he really had just was fresh off the boat from Hawaii. He was lean, wiry, mean. I mean, he was really amazing. And uh, um, he wasn't the first school that I checked out when I was going to be introduced to self-defense. I had to know what it was all about. I, I didn't know what it was. And the only thing I remembered was in the neighborhood. I'm sure you remember you see the strip malls and you have a karate school in there. And they would say teaching self-defense. So I thought, well, that's a good place to start. So that was where I went. But I made the tour of a lot of different styles and a lot of different um, teachers. But I'm more of a soft flowing rather than a hard. Uh, I, the Kung Fu was my personality. And so after uh, checking out all the schools, I even went to judo, jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu I loved. Uh, that was a really good. Uh, but kung fu was me from head to toe. The flow and the forms and the weapons. And, and I, before I actually uh, started, I really watched the classes. I wanted to know what I would look like when I was a black belt because I knew what I looked like as a white belt. And so I wanted to see what was my. You were the only lady, though, so it was odd to imagine it at that time. No, no, there were about 20 oh, yeah? other ladies when I started. Okay. But then one by one, they all fell out like flies because it was brutal. I mean, I think I mentioned one time that uh, when my mother and my husband began to complain because my body had a lot of battle marks on it. And uh, people began to look at me like my husband said, this is embarrassing. People are going to think I'm abusing my wife. I said, oh, <laughs> no. Who do said, they know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's horrible, you know. And so and during my time, you know, we didn't have gloves and we didn't have feet. And Nothing. we were bare knuckle. And uh, so I was, it was shin to shin, bone to bone. Oh my God, the pain, I must have been nuts. Oh, however, you Where know, you when like you're it? very, <laughs> when you're very young, you don't feel pain. Uh, what happens? We get old and we feel pain. When we're young, we don't feel pain. <laughs> well, th think about it. Even now you have a hard pillow. You want to get the soft one and feel comfortable. It's not like kids ago. you slept wherever you had to go. It didn't matter. Yeah. You know? and, but you know, uh, People always ask me, was all of that worth it? All of those years I put in, was it worth it, Malia? Uh, and I, you know, I really gave it some thought and, and, oh, I would never change a thing. Number one, I was just a, a little lady, a mother, child, water skiing, snow skiing, you know, but there was a timid part of me I, uh, uh, that I didn't 
I didn't know how to bring out. Oh, as a little girl, my mother always said, you're supposed to be seen and not heard. <laughs> hey, there I am. Look at me. <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. Malia, you know, something I had to say, usually people don't realize you don't make martial artists. There's always something in you when you start off in the school, whether you stay or don't stay. And if you, people just join because their mother put them in the class or whatever it was, but when you kind of know that if you were embedded in that martial art feeling, and look right now, I mean, everyone that we talked to just about is, it takes a special person to stay with it and go with it and live it and be part of oh, it. Oh, gosh, like, yes. Thank God, you were, yeah, oh, you you know, were one of them. What, what job in the world would have opened all the doors such as martial arts did to me. Uh, if I could have been Susie's secretary or decorator or whatever I wanted to be. But martial arts, I was listening to Jeff Smith when he was talking about all of the amazing, you know, Joe Lewis, Jim Harrison, Skipper Mullins, a lot of them have passed. But I am so grateful. I am of the era where I got to meet these people. I got to compete alongside of them and see them fight never to be I done again them. never to be done again it's just once in a now, lifetime that, that you get to do that yeah i mean uh, there's a lot of people that only read about these right. great but you were arts, there I, you were there for i this. was there yep. so when uh jeff talks about that i remember all that stuff mm -hmm. and i remember the tour in europe where we went with uh, you mentioned that the whole mentioned, team. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we and Linda Lee, Linda Lee and I had the most amazing time on that tour. It for us, even though I did my thing, but Linda Lee and I, it was like a, a girly thing, and we mm -hmm. were doing little girly things, and mm -hmm. we had a blast. But I would have never met George Bruckner. I would have never been. That was the beginning of my introduction to Europe. Was when I did that. Uh, show there and then I continued on to Italy to Paris I, I traveled the whole world mm -hmm. uh, that was amazing back there because you have to remember martial arts long ago was a man's world when oh. I started it was not a woman's world I was in a arena that I had to not only fight to win my matches but fight for attention so that the promoters would yeah pay attention to us and not take mm -hmm. us as a big joke you, you, you're a trailblazer and look at now in mma how women are they're they're battling in 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 the in the cage they're out there and they're getting the publicity getting the notoriety getting the uh the sponsors they're getting all this mm -hmm. stuff now where during your time they didn't do they could they you didn't have that no. Yeah. Thank you know, goodness for me being a pioneer. That's what it is. You are. And Jeff Smith read that as well. Yeah. Malia, the yeah. funny thing about it is yeah, I'm just a little old Sifu. I teach at my little school. But being a promoter, I got to meet all the greats. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, when you came up to me and, and we were in California, and you these, I knew who you were right away. Mm -hmm. No one had any yeah. problems with you. I remember reading about you and whatever. But I've been blessed to be able to meet all these people, and most of them I became very, very dear friends of. I mean, literally, I get on the phone, I speak to everyone at this point in my life. And I look at it, and if I'm able to bring that to other people, that's why I run my, my event, my expo. And we get over 4,000 people, and Joe is, yeah, there you go. Joe is like a witness. Give me one second. Joe's like a witness. So he came to the event, and he met all these people, and never met them before. But Vinny, come on. Yeah. That's yes. Can't hear you, Ben. Uh, can't, can't hear you, Ben. Can't hear you, Ben. Cannot hear you at all. Um, your 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 mic. There's something wrong. But Alan, what what I was gonna say before is that you minimize your value because you you never put yourself on a pedestal. So you know what you do, like the Joe Lewis's, the Bill Wallace's, the Jeff Smiths, all these people. Kari Tagawa, and Chuck Zito, all these people you bring to the table, you give them life every year. You put them there. You keep them relevant. And that's important. And Michael D. Pasquale Jr. says that constantly, and so do I, because it's true. But you minimize that because you, you don't 
but you don't push your chest out. But I'm going to do that for you because it is important because you're you're filling a need in the in the martial arts community in the world for that matter that is needed. And you do you've been doing oh, a great yes. job for a long time. Vincent, yes. un unplug your unplug the earpiece. Maybe it, it worked. Well, let me ask another question because I've been waiting for years to finally talk to you about this stuff. So, again, you, you started in Kaju Kembo. Again, Adriano Imperato's system, the classic phrase, we don't leave till there's blood on the floor. You were really <laughs> there at infancy when, when Al Costco started to explore Kung Fu. He was really the main. Al Costco's was actually uh, Professor Imperato's protege. Uh, Alda Cascos was Professor Imperato's protege, and he came from the islands out here. A lot of people don't know that, you know, and, and you will have a lot of people argue that point and say, no, that's not true. But I, with my own ears, was told by Professor Imperato when I, when I was in the islands that, yeah, I, you know, pat him on the back. That's my boy. That's my protege. You know, I expect him to do big things with Kaja Kempo, you know, and I heard it. And speaking of Imperato, I had the opportunity to compete in Hawaii. And, you know, I was, this was before I actually was introduced to Imperato. I, I just knew, oh my God, I'm going to compete in his tournament. And so what, I mean, I, I made a total fool of myself. I, I was so nervous. I fell down in my form, but thank goodness I was able to cover it up and look like I threw a kick in, came out of it. And in my fighting, I, I had to fight with a big patch on my eye because when I landed on the island, uh, some sort of bug bit my eye and totally made it out here. <laughs> and that was how I met Imperato. But Imperato, um, as my life went along, became a man that was always watching out for me, uh, watching over me, caring about what are you doing? And, you know, care. sad when Al and I got divorced. Uh, he was very sad about that. And Imperato was, um, I, I don't know if you guys know, I have my own style called She and I Kung Fu. And I don't know if you guys know also that for um, 23 years, I was, I was out of the art when I, uh, I was demoted to white belt. And um, for 23 years, that was why I went into fitness because um, I was demoted to white belt and that at the peak of my career and in my seminar circuit and, and I was demoted and it had nothing to do with my ability as a martial artist. It, it was a personal thing. Of course. And take yeah, down the way. You know, since then, I could care less. You know, Al and I are friends. And I thank Al because 23 years I was, that's why people ask me for pictures. And the, I don't have anything because for 23 years, I can you believe I took all my uniforms and I took them to goodwill. Every oh, uniform, everything, wow. yeah. everything I own. Do, do you understand? Joe everything. just almost passed out just now. He can't believe it. I took everything because because you know okay let let's let's talk about that for a moment. When you got involved in competition, there were no women's divisions. There were none. You were the exception to the rule. You became the queen of kata. You know, Eric Lee is the little king of kata, but you're the queen. You know, you were. I mean, and on top of that, and the reason why I'm so shocked is well, a lot of people don't understand is way back when. You made your own uniforms. Your uniforms were unique in tournament competition. Yeah, they were. You didn't just buy off the rack. You made your own ones. That's exactly. very distinct. There were no there were no racks. <laughs> I wanted I I wanted to I wanted to be number one. I wanted to be on uh, the cover of Black Belt magazine. I wanted to promote women, and I figured I got to find a way to do this other than just fight. I got to look different. I don't want their same uniform. I'm going to change my hair. And that was even when my name really was not Malia. I was born with the name of Mary. My name is Mary. And so Al said, all right, if you're determined to do this, because he was against me changing the uniform, then we're going to change the whole thing. You're going to come back because uh, he took me out of tournaments. I was disqualified in every tournament I went into because I was only six weeks in school when he started throwing me in tournaments. And <laughs> I didn't know. He didn't tell me wow. that um, 
I had I didn't even know what a ring was. It was the night before the tournament. He put me in there and said, "Okay, you're going to do this, that, and they're going to say go, and you're going to kick and punch." I, what are you talking about? But anyhow, I went, and then when I got there and I saw all these women and these uniforms and all these different colored belts, and I felt, I felt so intimidated. I wanted to run out the door, and I told Al, "I'm not fighting. I'm not going in there." And, but anyhow, when I realized they lined you up by size, mm -hmm. not by belt. No, no, yeah. And I had a little white belt on in my first tournament. I think I was lined up with a blue belt. And then I began lining up with black belts. And the only thing I could do out of sheer fear was remember what I learned with Al in the six weeks I had been in his school where we would hit, punch, kick, no control just go because he didn't teach control and mm -hmm. so the only thing i'd see somebody coming at me i'd try to kill him because that was all i knew and hit right. kill him knock him out you know and so um, so i said no i see you have uh what it takes Thanks. because he thought i was i was too delicate because i didn't look like a fighter i the only thing he ever said about me was, well, I think I finally have my fighter because I had a nice set of arms and legs Remember. because I <laughs> water skied and I snow skied and I lifted weight. So I came to him in good shape. And so when he said, yeah, I think you have what it takes to become what you want to become. And then, you know, as I was just a white belt, maybe a, a a, a yellow belt, I don't know, but when I began to realize when I went to these tournaments, hey, there's progress to be made here for women. Well, look what the men are doing. Women can do this too, you know? And and so I told Al, if I'm going to fight, you're going to teach me weapons. You're going to teach me uh, kata. You're going to teach me everything I see those men doing over there. I want to do too. And he said, what? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. And then I said, I'm not going to do this for nothing. I'm do. I'm not getting paid to do this. Look at my body. My husband thinks uh, people think he's abusing me. I'm, I'm going to, uh, I want to make a name for myself, for you and your system. I want to be number one. And that's my goal. I don't want to just come home with another trophy. Malaya, when yes. you got the call from Black Belt Magazine, uh, that cover. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. see that smile? When uh, you got that call, that had to be the icing on the cake. Even you know though that was I still did? early. That was still when early. I got that, no, when I got that call, because I remember it as a, a white belt, yellow belt, I told the students, one day, you see this magazine, I'm going to be on the cover, and I'm just a little nobody. <laughs> And they laughed, ah, ha, 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 you know, I said, no, don't laugh, I'm serious. Well, when I finally got on the cover of this magazine, I did take this magazine to those students. And I said, remember when? Remember well, when I said? Yes, and just so. Just bring him on the show. Yeah. Pick him no, up. No, 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 I'll speak to him later. <laughs> but you know, one of the greatest things of all about Black Bank Magazine, I mean, all... All magazines back then were really kind to me. And um, I'll never forget, they were so gracious and always, I had so many interviews come out back then. Oh, look at me. Oh, Karen, Karen Turner. Oh, she was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. But um, I, when, when the magazine came out with Black Belt Magazine, that was in 1974. But, you know, 1974 and all these years went by to the year 2018 or 19, whatever it was. And Black Belt Magazine called me again and they said, Malia, we're going to make you woman of the year. And I said, are you serious? I said, 1974 all those years they said yeah look at you 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 did nothing but get better with your age you developed your own style you developed champions you worked with your son christy you went to europe you opened up all these schools and you couldn't even speak german and i, I mean i that was the biggest honor of all from 1974 to 2018. i have a very famous martial arts son and maybe yes. some people don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, my son, Mark Tecascos, you know, Mark, uh, 
there there look there's my little boys that's both my sons mark and craig my my yes. other son you know he, he took the art but he just did it to pacify me but very successful Leah, we we have something in common okay not that i was woman of the year i <laughs> for sure. uh, would hope not but, <laughs> no, but I, I was also 2004 kung fu stylist of the year for black belt magazine Oh, and they they had asked me to come down and do a cover. Now I had to be honest with you and lose, lose one of my friends and those. Oh, look, very I can much still better. do that. <laughs> I did. I turned the cover down. Of course, you only did. because oh. only because I had to go to California and didn't have time. And I said, <laughs> ah, I got my own magazine. I have, oh and I just God. never did it. Now, as I got older and I have yeah. grandchildren, I said to myself, "Stupid! Why didn't I do it?" You know, but but, 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 I, but you do this all the time, Alan. You don't. I know. You don't think about you. This is why. Look, when when I'm at the event and me, me and Alan are together, I'm the cameraman. I'm taking pictures. I'm preserving these memories, not just for Alan, but for yeah. everyone. When I'm at the event, because it's important. And now people see the videos and everything. Like, I oh, remember, yeah. you know, yes. ten years ago we did this and did that. Yeah, but nobody was chronicling that. So this is what we try yeah. to do. Yeah. It's important. Is it Lou, Lou got a great picture. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and yeah, I, yeah. we were very good friends. And, I, you know, I worked at his tournaments and everything over the years. But Arnold and I were big cowboy boot guys. We both love cowboy boots. And every time I see Arnold, first thing he does, he looks down at my boots to see what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one picture that I – and, again, I just walked over like every other day. And I put my hand up. And he's in the picture looking down at my boots. Yep. And Lou got the picture of that happening. Well, so, yeah. Anyway, it's just a funny story. But I never was on the cover of Black Belt just because I was lazy. You know, maybe. With, <laughs> with me, we talk about Mark. Everybody always likes to know stories about Mark. You know, I was never a conventional mother, never, ever. And when Mark turned 16 years of age, we were living in Hamburg, Germany. And so it's his birthday night. We got through. Mark was always my fighting partner back in Germany. We'd get in the ring, a hook, punch, kick. We had so much fun. He also became a teacher to me. But anyhow, it's Mark's 16th birthday, and I say, okay, come on, Mom's going to uh, take you out. So after class, we went to Manwa, our famous Chinese restaurant, and Lisa and her husband said, oh, it's Mark's birthday. We're going to celebrate with flowing wine, plum wine. So she brings out, this is when we found out Mark can't drink. So she brings out this wine. <laughs> and Mark, oh, this is good. And he's drinking, drinking this wine. And it didn't bother him until we left the restaurant and we got outside. And the cold hit him. And we had to go home on the train. And so we got on the train. And Mark started singing really loud 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 making a lot of noise and drawing attention and his little face got as red as your shirt alan he was just glowing and we had to get off the train <laughs> so mark's mother was a, i'm a bad influence i introduced my son and the first time he got drunk was with me but it's that was better so with much you than with better with you, you right? than being out somewhere else yeah, yeah. but that, that was i i you know my kids, you, it was really funny because I, I talk very free because when I lived in Germany, my school was in the Raperbahn district. What can I say? I was in red light district. Yeah. <laughs> and so right. uh, my sons, Mark and Craig, at one time wanted to go to a sex show. And they said, Mom, the, the students are going, can we go to a sex show? And I I almost had a heart attack, but I didn't want to show. I like fighting, you know. Al used to teach me, you show no expression. You just keep that face. And so when they asked me, and I, I was in here going, oh, what? <laughs> and so uh, I didn't even go to Al and ask him. I just looked at him, and I thought, well, if I say no, they're going to go sneak in. So I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say, okay, go. So I let them go. So I got Mark drunk on his 16th birthday, and I allowed him to go to a live sex show. What kind of a mother am I? He turned out to be a fine young man. He turned out to be a fine young man. 
I think I, you need I met to him a few be, times. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, my. Yeah. I don't know if any of you have ever had the opportunity to talk to Mark. Yeah, you I know? have a couple of times. Yeah. He's just really a. Uh, my other son always tells Mark, Mark, you're so, you know, Mark is always just such a gentleman. Um, and Craig, on the other hand, is a gentleman, but rough around the edges because Craig's mouth is a lot like mine. It's very like that. You don't get to be in business where Craig's at by not speaking up and fighting for yourself. Sure. But both of my sons, if you ever have the opportunity to have a conversation with either of them, you would be extremely entertained with their wild stories <laughs> but yes <laughs> and what what is mark we working on now i know you and i spoke, spoke about something he's working on a new project right now i'm sorry mark is you working on a new project right right now oh wait you're not he, coming in he, he's working on a new film mark you said he was working oh, yes, on a project you know, that's uh, not more uh, Mark related Yes, right. Mark yeah. is working. It, through the whole pandemic, he was actually at home. He was working. He was doing uh, voiceovers. He did a uh, voiceover for cartoon films, uh, martial arts stuff. He worked, um, and it, he was just so excited because a couple of weeks ago, he actually got to get on an airplane. Oh, he was so happy. Fly out of L.A., and <laughs> I think it, he went to uh, – Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he shot an amazing film, which I can't say much about it other than it wasn't a martial art film. And mm -hmm. he was happy to be able to use his talents because he's put so much time into learning to be an actor and studying Shakespeare and so much time in New York. So now as he ages, a lot of people are recognizing him for his, not just his martial art ability, oh, yeah. but his talent as an actor. So yes, if everything goes good in the world and we don't get shut down again, Mark is booked with movies for the rest of the year into the next year but, because he had a, a lot of movies to do, but then the pandemic canceled everything. But Malaya, the movie, uh, he's working on projects that have nothing to do with martial arts, right? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's showcasing his acting ability. Oh, and, 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 I, and I think that's so important, the transition yes. from just being a martial arts-only type of person to now being looked at, uh, seen as an actor in, well, in the film so project. Oh, that's so important. Yeah, sure. That just means he's going to be working more often than if he's just yeah, a martial exactly. artist. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, Mark well, says, you know, just, we, I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. No, I was gonna say we were just discussing a few weeks ago. Mark's one of one of Mark's latest roles is doing the voiceover as the uh, DC Comics uh, classic martial arts uh, 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 master uh, Richard Dragon in Batman: Soul of the Dragon, which was right. like a an offshoot yes. of, uh, of the old 1970s martial arts and black exploitation films. And uh, Lucy Liu portrayed uh, 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 Lady Shiva, and uh, you know, and it was great. And of course, you know. Him re reprising the character of Wo Fat in uh in Hawaii Five O. Yes. But yeah. I want to talk about that picture I just showed. <laughs> there was a time when show it again. two sons show, together. Show it again, Joe. Show it again. You bet. So let's talk about this picture because that's not a conventional kung fu uniform by any stretch of the imagination. Um, conventional. Uh, that uniform. <laughs> that uniform. What? Who did I do that for? Was that kung, inside kung fu? That magazine, is that? That was inside Kung Fu, and that was when you were doing. Was it the Conan show, the Conan uh, live action show on uh, at Universal? That that's right. That's when that was going on. But when I went in to do that shoot, and I took my boys with me, they wanted me to wear traditional uniform, and I said, "Oh, guys, don't you don't you want to change your cover? Let's give it a facelift. Let's do something different. I am not going to put on a uniform and." I'm going to do, and they said, well, what are you going to wear? And I said, well, I have no clue. Show me a room here that you have stuff in. So uh, I, I went into a storeroom, and you know that thing I'm wearing? You know what that was? That was a chamois to wash cars <laughs> no with. No way. One big chamois. Wow. And I, hold that magazine up again, please. Hold it up, you Joe. Hold it you up. Bet. Okay. And we have a larger photo in black and white, but the color one is so good. The cover of it. This was from a. 
was, this is from a, a oh, no, martial artist one-on-one -on -one with one-on-one -on -one interviews from 1990. Yeah. And uh, I'll try to get a real good close-up here. Hey, let me help you out, Louis. Well, if go. you look at that, okay. that was a chamois. And I got the scissors, and I said, Mark and Craig, tie that up back here. And then I took the bottom, and I put it here. And then I looked in there. They had some boots. I put those boots on. And then I saw that little feather thing in there. I said, oh, that'll dress it up. Put that feather there. That's and they were just going home oh, the <laughs> And so that was how that wow. cover came to be. Talk about innovation. <laughs> innovation and action. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I want it to be different. I've always wanted to. They they always call me the, right. you know, I was never traditional. I was always, they didn't know what okay. to expect. <laughs> I don't know if this is from the chamois shoot, but um. Oh my God! Yes, remember that? Oh, I can't believe you found it. I was hoping that they were lost. I wasn't sure <laughs> to show that. That would go. would go. He pulls out Joe. things out of nowhere from Mars, and I just I I don't know. Do it's you know that I? Well, you know, way back then, I was actually asked to pose for. Uh, Hefner's magazine. Really? They were doing it was women, so you were, it was women of all the different I wasn't sports. sure about that. They were doing women that had arrived at a certain level of sports and they went into martial arts and they asked me. And you know, they they would have paid at that time decent money. And I didn't yeah. have to be, probably would have looked the same there, same thing here, same thing there. But I thought about um I always used to think about my sons, Mark and Craig, and their opinion of their mother has always been uh, the only opinion that ever mattered to me, mm -hmm. my two sons. What anybody else thought of me, I could give a don't care. But my, my sons mean everything to me. And I thought, well, maybe years on down the road, they would look and say, Mom, why did you do that? Or, you know. I'm their mother. Craig, mm -hmm. Mark, not so bad. Craig, when I went to Dancing with the Stars, I had on a dress that, and he made me take it off. He said, Mom, you're not going to wear that dress. I said, why not? No, 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 no. You can't wear that dress. Right. So uh, I have, my kids have a certain, um, they put me on a pedestal and I don't want to fall down. If he right. sees you like that, he's like, no, you're my mommy. You don't, we don't wear stuff like that. And that no, exactly. Happen. Both Mark and Craig and um, their opinion. And they listen to me as well. They right. ask me, even to this day, Mark always asks my opinion. Craig, uh, he'll listen, but Craig is the one that makes the good decisions in the business world. I let him make that decision. But my kids uh, never forget how I brought them up and they never forget my values. They never forget what we all went through because you see all of us sitting here. We look like, oh, everything's great in life. We've all gone through much in life, you know, sure. and it's how we end up that counts. And, you know, I talk a lot about I this, I that, this. I could have done nothing if it hadn't been for my faith and my belief in God because I'm very religious. And I, uh, I, I pray daily. I read my Bible daily. I ask for guidance each day to put me on the path that is the right path that God has in store for me. And I don't rely on my own decision for a lot of things because I've made so many bad ones. And I made bad decisions when I didn't ask God to guide me. So my guide in life has always been and will always been uh, God. He is my teacher and he's the only one I listen to these days. And I bring my boys up with that same thought in mind. When you have to make a major decision in life, pray. Well, that's what's missing in our society, as we know today. Religion is like little by little disappearing. And people in our generation have to keep it alive. And, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. appreciate religion for that matter. I don't go to, you know, church or a synagogue or anything like that. But I think it's important to have that faith. What else are we otherwise? Well, you, you got to walk by faith in life because what else is there? What happens at the end of the road? If you don't walk yeah. by faith, what are you, what, what are you doing? If you don't believe there's something greater than you, then what are you doing? You know, yeah. What are you here you for? Know, obviously, a lot of people believe in God, at least 
that he answers prayers or you wouldn't see on Facebook all these requests from people asking us to pray mm -hmm. for their right. sick ones. Please pray, you know, they believe there is a God and that God will answer prayer or they wouldn't be asking us to pray. So mm -hmm. um, it's just the maybe I'm more into, like Alan says, he's more spiritual. I'm, I'm just good old fashioned old time religion hallelujah praise the lord that's me and well, I, 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 be, I believe in a religion and the fact that we all need it and I, mean, I say my prayers too but i think that we're losing so much in this country right now we really have to be stern with the younger people I, you know that's the only way i could you know appreciate what's well, going on also we're losing religious leaders that are leading with that faith and showing that faith and showing how it needs to be done. We've lost a lot over the past decade and who's yeah. leading now? Who's who's at the podium? And yeah, what do we have an Al Sharpton? No, you need you need actual religious leaders doing something and yeah. then showing these, these 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 young people that hey, you have to have faith in something, you know, more than than money. You need to have faith yeah. in something. Exactly. Yeah. You know, as a martial artist, I had to practice what I preach sure. as a teacher I have to practice what I preach as a fitness person I better look fit if I'm standing in front of somebody and telling them well I think you need to lose 20 pounds and you look at the trainer who should probably lose 20 pounds is not good mm -hmm. I'm not saying that people that have a little bit of weight on that's their that's their choice. I'm saying I'm the fitness trainer. I better look my part. I right. was number one. I was, I'm to be an example. I'm a fitness trainer to be an example. I'm a mother to be an example. I'm, I'm a, a woman who believes in God and follows God. I better be an example. You know and what it so is, Malay, is, 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 is walking the talk. And that's what it comes down to. Being, exactly. being an instructor, martial art instructor, is not just being teaching martial arts. No, no. Uh, you know, I mean, you pay a psychiatrist with your student. You pay a religious per person. It, it, it's people. I mean, I hate to see that's also disappearing. But old time guys, you know, people that have been around 40, 50 years, realize that we were not just put on this earth to be a martial arts instructor when we do teach. We teach. We do everything. Yeah, but so you're, that's you're also you're another parental figure in the whole scope of things because mm -hmm. that's how the young people look at you like you're a another father figure or another yeah. mother figure if you're leading yes. them, you know? You know what's so amazing yeah. is that um, I think, well, Mike and Craig kept me young, that is for sure. Um, but I am running around, so. Yeah, <laughs> I am 78. I can't. I hide the fact I that I'm 78. When I looked and at this article, it said 1990 and you were 46. And I'm like going, <laughs> hey. And I'm like, I'm, you know, you look in incredible bless. condition. I want to, may I, I just want to address that, the, the comment you made earlier about being a teacher and uh, being a fitness um, uh, a role model in regards to that. Uh, you've been an incredible teacher. Uh, people like Karen, uh, Karen Shepard, Shepherd, Karen right, Turner. Yeah. And and Christian Wolf and all the different individuals that you've taught over the over the many years and your legacy in regards to that and overcoming adversity. Like I said, you you mentioned you mentioned about you had gone through a very difficult divorce. You were you were excommunicated from the system for many years. Um, you know, let's when we talk about fitness. So let's talk about body defense. You had you had you had stepped away from uh, the martial arts and created the body defense system and and videotapes. How did all that come about? And is any of it still available? I was going to ask you as well. Yeah, well, I was when I left Germany. I, that was a funny story. I left Germany not knowing where I was going, and I left Germany. This is the God's truth. I left Germany when Alan and I were now splitting up. And I, I'm going to America. And I thought, oh, dear God, what am I going to do? I'm leaving Germany with eight U.S. dollars in my pocket and one suitcase because nobody knew I was leaving, only my two sons. And I had a, a seminar to do in New York. And this beautiful lady, she bought me a round trip ticket. She's thinking I'm going. But no, I know this is my way out. I'm going to New York. And. I had $8. I went to New York. 
I did my seminar, I did my performance, I did all that was asked, and uh, I was compensated. And so I thought, oh, dear God, how am I going to get from New York to San Francisco when I have $8 plus this bit of money I made here? So I thought about it, and I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I called people I knew in every state, and I said, hey, I'm visiting in America. How would you like to have a seminar? And so they... I would say, just pay my fare and, you know, bring me there and a few bucks. And that was how I worked my way from New York all the way across the country to get to San Francisco. That is an awesome story. That's an awesome story. I love that. But it shows yes, the innovation. I have you, never. You, you're thinking. And, you're thinking all the time. That's good. I never, yeah. never, never. Uh, I look at it as a journey and as a, a build character made me strong. I laugh about all the horrible things that ever happened in my life because mm -hmm. what? Oh why would I let it infest in my soul no. and make me angry and sick? That's who, not the way. Who to carries live. the luggage when you're angry? You, not them. So why no, carry I don't it? Care. Yeah. You, you know, and, and the you one good thing hell in Denver, I know that the whole thing with Raymond Rapue and that that was a horror story. And you, you did endure through all that, and uh, I was really shocked about all that. And uh, you really went through some major hardships during that time in Denver. Oh, I and, did. Um, and, and I always smile. I always kept fit because if you're not fit, boy, you can get sick. Uh, Vincent, did you say something? No. But you know what? All these trials and tribulations I went through only uh, gave my sons – uh, more admiration and, and to realize there's nothing too big you can't get over. Look what mom did. Look how mom made it. Look what mom did. Look what mom did. And th that's uh, like, I'm, I I don't know how it is. I'm 78 years old and God is good to me. Malaya, you I don't are, even take medication. You, you're a strong, no medication. You're a strong mom. woman. You're a strong female example, a model that other women should actually look towards. And I appreciate you because from being a mom, a martial artist, movies, this, that, you've done it all, but you face adversity. And these stories, these are the stories that last a lifetime and you sure. can inspire the next generation. And that's what you've done. You know, with your, what your sons have done are amazing. What you've done is even more amazing because without you, they wouldn't be able to elevate. Yeah, Mark wouldn't be the Iron yeah. Chef. He wouldn't have did all this stuff if mommy wasn't doing other, wasn't setting the example and paving the way. Yeah, it's well, funny. you know, I just wish that people who have gone through hardships and everybody's hardship was different, you know, but at one time, I was very much in love with Al Cascos. He was everything to me. He was my teacher. He was first. He was my teacher, then my lover, then my husband. Never marry your teacher. Okay. And then <laughs> um, say that one more time. We had one hardships. <laughs> Things, we had we had trouble, but and then we divorced, and then I was demoted, and all of this horrible, crappy <laughs> stuff. My story makes an amazing movie. But it was a great story. But do I have any um, hard feelings towards Al? For a while I did, but I thought, you know, why should I have shot? I wasn't perfect. He wasn't perfect. Two perfect people don't make a perfect, or imperfect people no. don't make a perfect call. I have no hardship over Al. He's my friend. I talk to him. I care what happens to him. I want him to be successful. I don't want anybody screwing him around. He's an amazing martial artist. He was my husband, father to my children, and my right. teacher. Right. And I have, I don't feel any, I, I can go to sleep at night totally happy i am it, it, happy it's funny the funny thing about what i was saying before about how we go into different things whatever we do in life as a martial art instructor that we are the best image of adapting to things we learn to adapt as martial artists to things that no one else could understand i mean yeah. you know i i myself i mean i i would get asked to do things and people said do you know how to do this I said, of course i do and I go to the computer, I look up what I got to learn. <laughs> and we learn to adapt. Uh, I became a publisher. 30 years my magazine's published. I had wow. no idea what the hell I was doing. And guess what? Action Magazine's still being published 30 years later. And I'm doing, I have another magazine coming out. So, so. But I'm just saying that 
everyone here being the martial artist gives us a different image of what the world is in front of us. There is no barriers. There's nothing stopping us from doing what we do. I mean, look at Vinny. Vinny Vinny's a comedian. He's on TV. He's done some great things in the martial art world. He's, he, he's, he's a, a mute today. He's a mute he's today a, because Vinny my and, and, and Vinny's also on Mars. Vinny? I don't know if he's Vinny's on Mars. Vinny. He has his name on Mars on top of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we can't hear the art. Really, we can't hear the audience. He's <laughs> muted. He's <laughs> muted today because his computer is doing whatever. But we love to see his face. We love to have him on. But yeah, you know, yeah, as far as adapting, yeah, look at Vinny. He's doing all types of things. One of right? He's just yeah. doing sign language yeah. in a minute. But you know, being the adaptive <laughs> people we are, your story is so unusual. But it's not as a martial artist. Because you would have yeah. where you needed to go. And that's well, that's you know what, I'm Alan? Saying. Nobody knows my story really what? because I never shared it. Because what I don't want, um, I don't want people, oh, poor her. It was, I, I lived through it and nobody needed to know. But when I grew older now, I think I lived an amazing life. I have an amazing story. Look what I went through. And I ended up still okay. I'm still, and you know, it's like, I could never have ended up like this if it hadn't been for my faith, though, because I could have gone the other way and been hatred and I hate you and hard and no, there's no perfect people. Okay, we've got the trivia question. The trivia question tonight is many people don't realize, and you, you volunteered the information that you trained with the man who fought Bruce Lee. You trained with Wong Jack Man. Tell us about training with him. It was absolutely the most unusual training ever because, first of all, he didn't speak English. He never talked. You would go into the school and you didn't know what you should do. He would point and I would look at the other students. It was like no school I had ever been in. Wong Jack Man had amazing students, and we all tell the same story. Wong Jack Man, uh, when he wanted to teach me weapons, we went over to the weapon rack, and he picked up, he said, you like, you like, and he, so he started teaching me. Then he, he would invite me to go out on Friday night after class, we would go out to eat. Never talked. I never had more words out of ever. We'd sit there and I'd feel so funny. He wouldn't talk. I didn't know what to do. But my training was uh, nothing like an American uh, martial arts school you go into. Nothing like, nothing, nothing, nothing. My instructor, I lived with him for six years. And we lived in a temple. So when you, you say the certain things that rings a bell to me. And, you know, people, some people don't realize the Chinese training it's a lot different than other styles just because of the mannerisms that you, you brought up in, very honestly. So that's very, very cool. Yeah. Well, and, and Wang Jack Man, you know, he was so elegant and so beautiful. And he was so unassuming, you know, you would never think he could do what he could do. And I loved him dearly. And, um, you know, I, I always was in such awe and such honor to be part of that association and recognized and I can never forget going to train there. Those are memories that are embedded up here and up here. Wonderful, wonderful memories. And as far as Bruce Lee, I didn't know Bruce Lee personally. I've met him several times, but I was friends with his wife, Linda. Linda and I are good friends. And I can remember uh, Brandon Lee and Shannon Lee coming to our home in Denver, Colorado, and Mark and Craig playing with Brandon and Shannon when they were little. Uh, but my my relationship uh, with Bruce and Linda was, of course, was with Linda. And uh, amazing, amazing stories. Uh, people don't even realize that Linda Lee tried to get me into the movies. You know how many people tried to bring me into movies? And mm -hmm. I said no. How stupid I, I was. But si sidekick you were in. Sorry? That's right. Norris. Sidekick, Chuck Norris. Yeah, oh yeah, Chuck got me. Well, he called me when I lived in the West Indies. I had a Mexican restaurant. I was just enjoying life. 
didn't know how to cook, but I had a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Chuck said, you got to be in this movie. There's nobody that can be you. You got to be you. I said, Chuck, I don't even practice my forms. And <laughs> but so I said, OK. So what I did was I, I taught fitness in the islands as well as Mexican restaurant. I lined up my fitness students. I said, OK, I'm going to perform for you. Be truthful. If it looks bad, tell me. So I did a form. I said, okay. They were, oh, we've never seen you do that. Oh. And so their reaction was so good. So I said, okay, I'm coming. So that was amazing. I actually did two movies with Chuck Norris. The first one uh, it was when he was married to Diane Norris. And I had a little, a little walking part across the movie. I don't even remember the name of the movie, but <laughs> I walked across the screen. But that was when he was married to Diane Norris. And uh, yeah, I have so many people. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know you got to end your show. Miss Verbal Diarrhea here. <laughs> All right, we're, go we're, we're gonna finish up now. Vinny's gonna have to use sign language <laughs> at least. <laughs> but please, you you'll let, your, your last words. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, th those who might hear what I've said tonight, I in no way want anybody to hold any kind of hardship against my ex-husband Al because that's not necessary. I, there is no problem with whatever I went through. Al is an amazing martial artist, and I want uh, all of you to uh, learn from him, whatever he's offering, and no hard feelings. I'm, a, I'm not a, a weak woman. I'm a strong woman. And if I'm not affected by it, I want no one else to be affected. I probably am the only white belt master you know of that has turned out champions. <laughs> and so I just want to say thank you so much for having me on your show. It's amazing to get to, to Kempel Joe and Vince and Alan and Lewis and all of you. And I hope that one day we can all be together at Dim Sum. Oh, yes. Speaking of Dim Sum, don't forget, you guys, watch my show, Road to the Top. <laughs> I, too, have a little show. I'll have to bring you on, Alan. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, life is short. Everybody live it happy. Live it clean, live it the best you can, work out, sleep, be kind to everybody, show love, not hate. Color is nothing. Color is the spice of life. So whether you're yellow, black, blue, or green, it doesn't matter. We love everybody. So that's all I want my message to be. Thank you for having me on your show. Joe, anything to say, Joe? be grateful uh, uh molly i've been wanting to talk to you for 40 years i um when i saw you as a young boy growing up on that on that special doing your kung fu form you were in, one of the people that inspired me to study kung fu and i'm eternally grateful for that and i'm hoping that one day i can have you on my program as well we'll discuss it and i'm really grateful again thank you alan again for creating this golden opportunity lewis thank you very much and i'm always glad to be part of the alan goldberg power hour thank bye you. vince next time we'll talk we'll talk ben <laughs> thanks ben lou anything you got to finish up with uh no <laughs> just one thing actually before we close out uh we're going to be doing something special we're going to announce the next show but it has to then alan you don't even know about it but it has to do with uh, martial artists and martial arts and something that Alan pioneered a long time ago. And we're going to bring this back just a little bit differently. And it's going to be something that um, martial artists are going to be able to make money off of. And I'll, I'll explain it next week. Yeah, money is good. Tune in. Yeah. <laughs> now Molly has inspired me. Now I want to be on the cover of Action Martial Arts Magazine. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to finish up now. I just want to say a few things. Um, I, I recently, how I say we adapt to something. I just did yesterday, my first time ever, I did a voiceover for a movie called Martial Arts. And it's from Alex Lee. He traveled all over the country filming. Probably got about, God, 75, 80 hours of filming. Put it there. Did a good job. A really, really classy job. And he actually starts from like the 1800s with martial arts. I did the, I did the voiceovers. I had no idea what the hell I was doing, but when he asked me, I said, "Of course, no problem." 
Yeah, of course, no problem. So we're watching that. This should be out, believe it or not, in about another month. So uh, look, look forward to that. But I just want to thank our sponsors. Again, Bureau Hive. I want to thank Lou for always taking care of us, doing the right thing. Uh, we also want to thank Dr. James Garrow on Death Protection USA. It's an actually electronic blocker for people that are trying to listen to your phone. Really interesting. Warner Entertainment with Don Warner. Don is a great guy. He supports us big. Shallon Brand, which I'm also part owners of. We do uh, Dita Giles out of Chicago, all different type of liniments. And my channel that's coming up, 24-hour a day channel, seven days a week, is the Amen channel. It's going to be a real cool channel. We have hundreds and hundreds of hours of the old Run Run Shaw movies, Sonny Chiba, Don, um, oh, Bruce Lee movies, everything. It's going to be great. We're starting off slowly. Where we're just going to show those type of movies, and then we'll bring in other things into it. Still working on the pay-per-view, which will be attached to that. Some great things happening down down to 2021. Let's get ourselves out of this COVID-19 mentality and move forward. Uh, I just want to thank everyone. My event will be on. We also just booked Istanbul, Turkey today. We're going to have Istanbul, Turkey. We're going to have an event. Brazil, we're going to have an event. And we're definitely the Moscow in Russia event 2023. And I was just contacted today from Spain, believe it or not, to ask me about it. Not that I'm running the events, but I'm a co-sponsor with the events with these people. They'll be using my title, The Ultimate Destination for Martial Arts, Action Martial Arts Magazine. So we got a lot of crazy things going on. And I just have to say, very clean and clear, Frank Dukes, we're waiting for you to come on the show. Please show up. And we'll... we'll, we'll Vinny, take care. Vinny, don't pass out. Don't pass out. But uh, Frank was still waiting. Actually, on the phone, his guy, Sky Benson, called me while we were on the show. So I'm trying to work this out. Uh, Joe, you'll have a good time on this show, too. I know you have a lot of questions. <laughs> anyway. All right, folks. Thank you again. God bless everybody. Enjoy your life. As Mayali said, enjoy what you're doing. Okay, because there are a lot of positive things out there still ahead of us all. Thank you. God bless you all.